Uy, B, ano ang sarami mong nangunguy? Naguro-muro naman sa lagi na. Kaya kayo, eh. Parang tutsok ka nag-i-vlog ako sa kat. <sighs> Pandemia ba yan? Sige, mag-vlog-vlog, tanong? Da, wala tsuk yung pakin ako. <laughs> Nam, ang good. Ano lang. Ano ba tag ka sa Gorodo Museum na? Di ba sarado pa sila? Ang bling na, uy. Virtually. Ay, ano pang good, B? Huwag mo kalimot good ngayon saan ko nung mag-vlog last year. Ba't kanilang sa for now, ha? Pinaagi sa Casa Gordo Museum Virtual Tour, makasuway tag guided tours rood sa balay kung napagay mga pagdrama sa maayong pamatasan sa una sa mga subuan nun. Hello, kalay siya good anak, B. Basin mo halos ikaw yun ako, B, ha? Abli na ba yung katang gitsa? Hello, B. Afford na kayo ni B. Uy, only the best for you. Hello, wala na siya na admission fee. Hello, ato kong nasuway yan, B. Suway, good! Pwede na magbisita sa Casa Gordo gamit ibang mga smartphone, iPhone, Android phone, aside sa laptop or desktop. Hala, yung nga nag-i-di sila ka-accessible? Hala, kasi yun na di mo sorry sa Casa Gordo Museum, oi. Mata na, uy! <laughs> Anya, kumusta ba yung experience sa Casa Gurordo Museum Virtual Tour? Nindot kaya akong feeling, Roy, kay Murad siya kong naasa sulod sa museum. Huwag daghan sa kong nakatunan, Roy, bahin sa, sa balay, Roy, kultura. Huwag kabilin sa atong mga sugbuanong katigulangan. O basta, uy, nindot kayo. Huwag ako po nang i-share ang link sa virtual tour nila Glester, Japet, 
James o Jasper o sa akong mga mga dog family o para ginista na So ayun mo paglangan o i-check na ninyo ang website sa casagorordomuseum.org Araw na experience ninyo ang amun na experience Most loving Father, you have brought us to the beginning of a new day. As our eyes open to the morning light, our mouths praise your beauty and goodness in the splendor and design of your creation. We accept the renewed gift of life and grace with gratitude. We offer you our every thought, word, and act today, and pray that it be in accordance with your will and in furtherance of your glory. Make us instruments of your presence to others. Use our minds to understand the big picture, our hearts full of passion and purpose, and our hands to build partnerships. Let us be educate persons to become architects of change and fulfill our promise of elevating lives of communities and people we serve. When evening comes, gather us again, safe under the shelter of your wings, to rest confirmed in your love. And with assurance that with your help, we have taken one more step towards a better world. Amen. Good afternoon and maayong hapon sa tanan. We are back this afternoon for another episode of CGM Talk online series entitled Basics of Heritage, Understanding Heritage and Its Importance. Ako di ay si Rave and I'll be your host for today. I am the program officer for events of Casa Gorordo Museum. The CGM Talk online series is one of the many programs of the Culture and Heritage Unit of the Ramon Aboitis Foundation Incorporated that promotes Cebuano culture and heritage. As we are celebrating the National Heritage Month, we will discuss the basics of heritage, focusing on its types and the need to conserve and protect them as part of local culture, which gives us pride of place, identity, and sustenance for social life. Our speaker for today was the director of the Cebuano Study Center of the University of San Carlos from 1996 to 2011 where she directed research in Cebuano culture. Since taking over the position from Dr. Rizel Mujares in 1996, she also directed the Corne Cornelio Faigao Memorial Annual Writers' Workshop of Cebu and has served as a regular panelist in the National Writers' Workshop 
of MSU IIT. She is a teacher, researcher, cultural worker, heritage advocate, feminist, and writer. Since 1969, she has taught courses in language, literature, folklore, and research at USC. She has written numerous journal articles and edited various anthologies of Cebuano literature for the NCAA, the Cebuano Study Center, the Ateneo de Manila University Press, and the USC Press, and the Women in, Lit Women in Literary Arts, Cebu. She has served as head, advisor, founding member, and board member in the National Professional Groups in Philippine Studies, History, Anthropology, Literary Research, and Cultural Research, as well as in the local groups like Women in Literary Arts, Cebu, the Academiang Bisaya, and the Heritage Advocate Group, Hamiling Binili. Since 2010, she has served as a member of the Cebu City Historical and Cultural Affairs Commission. She, has, she was, um, she was reg regional coordinator for several terms in the Literary Arts Committee, and after that, in the Historical Research Committee of the NCAA. For consistently promoting Cebuano culture, she was featured among Cebu's Women Achievers by the Sunstar publication in 2007. Her poetry was included in the, in the exhibit of the International Women's Poetry Festival at the Library of Congress in 2008. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our speaker for this afternoon, Dr. Erlinda K. Alburo. May hapon. So let's start now. I have a PowerPoint presentation. Okay, this lecture is entitled Kabiling Subuanan. But, um, of course, it will talk about the basics. And although the focus is in Subuanan, and all the examples will be from around here, it is applicable to everybody in the Philippines. From Spelling World, sorry. So, first of all, we are going to talk about what heritage is and then what are the forms of heritage. And then we will uh, see how we can still preserve our heritage without destroying it and make it functional in a globalizing world. And that will uh, have to be involved in tourism. So first, what is heritage? It is as much about people as it is about relics and the challenges to balance preservation with modern day realities. I mentioned already uh, adaptation, make it more functional, contemporary times. Another uh, quotation is that heritage is our legacy from the past, what we live with today and what we pass on to future generations. So when we study heritage, it's because we want to see uh, which of our heritage would be still practicable and uh, needful to pass on to future generations. Heritage in Tagalog is pamana, kabilin in Cebuano. So anything that one values and which you may want to, to pass on to your children and grandchildren. It may be tangible, can be touched, can be seen, can be heard, or it can be floating, no? like oral traditions that is worth cherishing. It's important because it shows us how we have been as a people and our nation's development and history because the heritage changes also through history. Then we mentioned the last line there is about embodying our unique cultural identity. So um, I would like to speak about uh, culture first, not before we talk about cultural heritage. So generally, what do we understand by culture? Culture is uh, all of the activities made by man in order to survive. No? And that covers a lot. Because when he is in a group, he does not survive alone. When he is in a group, he wants to be able to communicate with other members of the group. And he wants to feel security within a very uh, unstable uh, place, especially 
maybe when there were a few people around and he could not explain why the sun rises here and then it sets there and why you have storms, why you have diseases. And so he came up with beliefs to try to explain, no? and now we call it science. And then another part of culture aside from beliefs would be behavior. Now there are to be uh, rules to be followed, but as agreed upon by the group. So how do you keep order in a community, especially if it is growing? You have to have rules. And the rules are not legislated like we have where there is a police, but it is by custom. And by custom, it's, it's not uh, that they formally uh, meet and agree that we will do this, we will do that. But um, error by error and trial, uh, people have learned which uh, modes of doing things would be better for their situation. And so it's, it's important to have uh, an idea of uh, what a culture has. Because if you are a member of that culture, then you know how to move, how to behave, how to uh, get the utmost of the situation. You know how to deal with old people. You know how to deal with fish and flower and plants. You know how to use them for your own benefit. So identity is important because when you are in a group, you want to feel belonging, naturally. Now, how can you be happy if uh, you don't have friends or you cannot communicate well? You don't know the language of the group. Identity refers to an understanding of yourself in relation to your culture. So it asks you to define yourself, how you have become yourself. And a knowledge of our heritage will help you do that, will help you affirm your identity. For example, especially if you go to a foreign place, no, you will be um, bombarded with a lot of things that you are not familiar with, so you feel uh, you don't really belong. No? So it is important, that is why some people, when they go abroad, they go in groups. Like Filipinos, look for other Filipinos to live with. Because they, have, uh, they feel stronger, they feel more secure, and there is order, and they feel happier when they are uh, in a group with, uh, with the same culture. So identity is important. It is nurtured by the cultural heritage of a country. Without heritage, you don't know your identity. It is vitalized by the understanding of the tangible heritage, tangible, and you also have the intangible that which you cannot really touch, like uh, songs and dances. A knowledge of the evaluation of behavior patterns, values, and traditions of that culture. So there are three parts of culture actually. No? The uh, beliefs no? and uh, other abstract concepts like cosmology. Uh, and second would be behavior, how you deal with uh, people. And the third would be material culture. So what objects in the surrounding do you use to eat? To clothe yourself, to sleep in, and other uh, physical needs. So those are the three aspects of culture. And in each of these aspects, we have the things that we value that we would like to preserve. Okay. So now, uh, why be aware of cultural heritage? It keeps us attached to our religion, traditions, and beliefs. It is necessary to improve awareness of this cultural heritage, the ethics of its care. So you, it's not enough to, be, to know what are the forms of heritage, but you have to treasure them and you have to be sure that they are not destroyed. So how do you do that? You have a, a, an ethics of care. So you don't just go around like, it's not enough to have all these artifacts in a museum and just gather dust there and then look at it and say, oh, this is what you know, 200 years ago, our grand, uh, grandparents uh, uh, did you know, with, with, with uh, wood or, or baskets or what, but they should be really used in contemporary times. To survive, they have to be functional. So how do we do that? We'll see some of the ways later. So heritage education needs to be developed in schools and through informal education. So I think it should, it's better to have it as a kind of course, no? formal course in school where you have a study of heritage. And informal education would be other institutions like the church can help you, the, uh, your family, the community. So the best way to preserve it would be to share with others. It is our responsibility to preserve it so the 
coming generations will value it also. Well, national, nationally, we have uh, some laws already that will protect this heritage. This is especially RA 10066, but it is it's, um, mostly uh, used when, when you have questions of uh, old houses being destroyed, for example. No? And uh, there is a rule about being 50 years old. You cannot do anything about it. You have to ask permission of the National Historical Commission because it will be declared a cultural property. And yet, although it belongs to an individual, that individual cannot just uh, destroy it any, any way he wants. So and this is a call also for heritage people who are aware of this heritage, especially of these uh, tangible buildings, for example, heritage, tangible heritage buildings, museums, to uh, to express protest or at least to inform you know, the government or any agency that this is a thing that has to be preserved and then you, you, you report it to the National Commission and they will declare it a cultural property. So this is our law. Now there are uh, broadly two kinds of heritage. One is natural, that is not man-made, so the things around you that are natural, like the trees, you know, the uh, geological formations, and cultural, which have been developed because of man's activity in his attempt to survive. No, natural heritage will be all parts of our surroundings which are not created by man. They may have cultural, of course. They may be natural, but they also have cultural uh, significance. Aesthetic, they look good spiritual or ecological, which could be directly usable resources. So these are the examples. Landscapes, mountains, volcanoes, forests, caves, rice fields, flora, fauna, rocks, minerals, etc. And the other kind, which is what we are more interested in because we can do more about this, um, about the, the natural heritage, we also have, we have national agencies to take care of those. No? But cultural heritage, we can do something about it individually. So this is the ways of living developed by community, passed on from generation to generation. And this would include customs, practices, places, objects, artistic expressions, and values. And uh, in turn, cultural heritage may be subdivided into intangible, cannot be touched, or, oh, yeah, tangible or tangible. First, tangible. Oh. Natural, natural heritage should refer to, to this, no? La natural landscapes. You have corals there and your beaches. Then you have some places that look for the oldest tree alive. I don't know if we have that here. These are trees, you have mangroves. Then you have plants, okay? Lang ilang, sampagita, waling waling, orchids. These are, let me see, do you know what this is? This is from Kawasan, and this one is where? Oro, Pilat Cave. You can see the uh, formations no, in the cave. These are interesting. Other examples would be, this would be Smenya Peak in Dalagip, and the Boho River in Alunginsan. Now, this natural heritage, uh, at Boho River has been developed into an ecotourism site and it has won about five international awards. How about fauna? So here we have a damselfly. I have not seen it, but uh, it, it is almost extinct, Duro. And then another is the siloi or the black shama which is like a nightingale. I have actually heard it sing, no? But in Manila, uh, it was very uh, unexpected because I found it in a, in a tree near my, my friend's house. Another is the fish called the uh, tughud, one of the smallest fish in existence. It can live in brackish water. Sadly, this fish is facing extinction. Now, this is part of heritage. So what can we do about uh, preservation? Uh, maybe maybe we can't hear, we are living in the city and they're all, all out there in uh, where. But actually, uh, the damsel was, was found in uh, Tikawasan, 
and then Lakshama is usually in south. The Uling Gubi also is in, I don't remember now where it was, but it, it's maybe it's extinct already. It's very, very small. There are three more examples here. This is a hawk owl, actually believed to be extinct, but in Alcoy, it was there in, uh, it was found in Nugas by some Japanese uh, ecologists. Looks like a worm, it's a worm. It's called a small worm skink. One of only two species with an, an equal number of toes and fingers. It has three fingers. I don't know where the fingers are, but it could be kind of mga, <laughs> those, those like project, three fingers and two toes. They are found in Matalongon, Darili, Tapal, and Tuisan. This was discovered by Humalon, Kawasan Paper Kai, found in Kawasan, Dalagip, and Alcoy. Now you notice Alcoy is a very rich uh, site for this natural heritage. This is a flower pecker, also in Alcoy and Mount Lantoy. So after natural, go to the tangible and intangible. So first tangible, the first two, those places that advocate the country's history and culture like monuments, mosques, shrines, monasteries, churches, uh, forts. It is the totality of cultural property with historical, archival, anthropological, archaeological, artistic, and architectural value, and with exceptional or traditional production, including antiques and natural history specimens with significant value. But you have to, uh, I, it's not just this uh, large, large objects, not like monuments, but even the uh, artifacts. So they can be either immovable or movable. If it is immovable, then you have uh, those large objects like monuments, government buildings. The movable would be things that you can put in the museum or in your house, if you like. Paintings, sculptures, coins, manuscripts, articles, costumes, weapons, instruments, books, artworks, religious items like statues of uh, saints. Samples. This would be from Kartar. This is our, I'm from Argao. This is our church with a, a unique thing. This is the only one in the Philippines with this, uh, the wall of paseos around it. Stations of the cross, which are uh, sculpted around, around the church. Who knows what this is? This is a quartel of Oslop. Never been used because uh, of the revolution 1899. Um, Oslop was built by the Spaniards as military barracks believed to be one of its kind in the country, but unfinished and unused. Everybody knows the Magellan's Cross. What about movable, the ones you see in museums, you have paintings, like this one is from the Holland Museum. Although it is mainly a museum for music, it also has other artifacts like paintings and sculptures. These are the garbs of the priest, no? Uh, the old, the old uh, outfits of the priest, if you have gone to uh, Augustinian Museum, they're very uh, striking. They have gold inlaid. No? Now, uh, the one on the lower right is from Casagorobudo, and you have uh, the articles or material objects used in cooking before. So this is the banguera. And what is this? This is the tartanilia. I think it is also found in other places in the Visayas, not just in Cebu. So after the tangible, we have intangible. And this is what we uh, generally refer to as traditional culture. It refers to those aspects of a culture that cannot be touched. For example, folklore, language, traditions, oral and written, customs, values, trade, and skills. So what are the kinds of traditional culture that need protection? Oral traditions. What are oral traditions? Narratives, like legends and myths and folk tales. Language, Sibwana language. Oral history. You have uh, a lot, you have projects uh, collecting stories told by 
the survivors no, of the World War, for example. And these stories will be lost if they are not collected. And some of them have already been um, documented in the uh, town history project of the provincial uh, government of Cebu. Cuisine. Lechon So I don't think the cuisine will really go away, no? Because, because, because we like them. Lechon, puso, and, and as long as the materials are still around, we still have uh, palm leaves for for the puso, and as long as we have pigs for lechon, they will never uh, go away. We have traditional practices of farming and fishing. This has been uh, challenged by uh, more modern ways of fishing that are, however, detrimental to the livelihood of the small folk, no? those who, who use kubub or um, Rami, or they use uh, dynamite, uh, they would not only destroy the fish itself, but also the traditional practices. Traditional medical knowledge, what kinds of herbs are maybe useful for medicine? And then you have performing arts, dance, music, song, sports. Now some of them may not go away, like Sabong, no sports. I mean, will always be around, but and dance will still be around, but not all of them. Uh, during cultural shows and programs in schools, at least they are still being performed. Music uh, also uh, they are taught in school, and uh, folk songs. Social practices, ritual, festive events. Most of these are related to the church calendar. Like even if they are full of uh, maybe non-religious non activities like in the fiesta. Although the fiesta is really uh, originally meant for uh, veneration of the patron, but they include a lot of other activities. Knowledge and practices concerning nature and the universe. Telling time. No? So long ago, we didn't have clocks. How did uh, we tell time? For example, there is, uh, uh, there is a mention in many uh, history books of about the Visayans, because we have the most uh, body of water, no, and uh, we, we even went as far as China before to uh, to conduct raids on the Chinese. Uh, how did they tell how far to go and what direction to take? They had um, different, let us say, in, in um, these native ways or indigenous ways of telling time and telling distance. Animal husbandry, how to take care of pigs and uh, other animals which are not in the books. And cultivation. Knowledge and skills to produce traditional crafts. Now, baskets, weapons, and uh, decoration and accessories are material objects, they are tangible. But what is intangible would be the skills. If you, you, you may... Um, well, you, you may preserve those objects in the museum, no? But how about the skills in making them? For example, one one um, handicraft that uh, is facing extinction is the lagang of Argao. That is a chamber nautilus. I have a picture later. And I think uh, Joe Burst now has, is just interviewing some people in Argao about it. Um, because the material, the chamber nautilus, the shell, the gang, is extinct or almost extinct. The, the skill has to die, of course, but we could probably use other shells, other kinds of shells, though it may not be the same because the chamber nautilus is, is a very rich uh, luster or color. Okay, part of intangible musical instruments. Of course, the guitar is there and there is to have harp. Um, we don't have anymore the pre Hispanic musical instruments in Cebu. We have this in Mindanao and in Tugao, but, but here because uh, Cebu was the uh, very first to be civilized, no? <laughs> to be westernized, um, we don't really have them. It's only in the history books that you see them. Book songs, oh, we have examples. Uh, children's song, we have Ako Anak Ni Tatay, nonsense song. Akitong Kitong Pipilimon, work song. Ako Kini Sa Angi is another work song. Salungsod sa Benavista is a ballad. Dandan Soy is a drinking song. And also, Pobring Atlindao. Now, what is uh, below that would be 
some songs that are not really produced by the folk, but they are so well identified as one of because they are, they are very popular. They are now considered traditional and also part of culture. Rosa's Pangdan, no? it was composed uh, for uh, uh, Sarsuela by uh, Yoks Kabahar. Matud Nila and Sahay. Well, uh, when, when, <laughs> when comment about Matudnila or Sainas as Pangdan, uh, we have seen, I, I don't know if you have, but uh, in YouTube you have several uh, renditions by foreign choruses singing Rosas Pangdan and Matudnila. Probably not Sahay, but Rosas Pangdan and Matudnila. Folk narratives or stories, legends like the legend of Maria Cacao, the Santo Nino legends, the legend of the islet of Capitan Silio, which is across Bugo town, and then many, many legends about the origin of the names of the towns. This is Maria Cacao. This is Capitan Silio, the story of uh, Mangao, the father of Lapu-Lapu, and how uh, he and his friend, uh, Capitan Silio of Bugo, um, had a race. And then folk tales, which uh, these are only examples of Juan Puso, Haringanges, and Haringwati. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this, but Juan Puso is like Juan Tamad, and Haringanges about uh, Skeda, Hanangangis, no? um, and his war with the, the lions, uh, the, the, the animals led by the lions. This is really a subversive story during the Spanish period no? when the mighty did not really win the war, but you have the, the small uh, the small insects like the wasps, the gnats, the mosquitoes. They won the war, of course, because uh, the big animals could be bitten by them, no? Haringwati or worm has a moral lesson. So where do you get this? Uh, I have personally collected some of these uh, narratives and they are found at the Sabuano Study Center. We have Sabuano Folk Tales 1, which are fables. This is the illustration for Nano nga magsigugong hugong ang lamok. And this one is the Capitan Silio legend. And you have folk songs. And the last one, the most recent one, is Riddles and Proverbs. They have uh, English text as well. And I think they're almost sold out because they have been around for about uh, 30 years. Okay, the next intangible heritage that is to me important is language or Sinubuan. These are just a few examples. So the things that we take for granted, for example, interrogatives, we use ha'in for the present, as in ha'in siya karun. But if you talk about the past, you use the in, the in siya gahapon. And you want to talk about something that has not yet occurred, you will use asa. Asa for the future. So, hain siya karun, din siya gahapon, asa ka ugma. Now, a lot of our, uh, well, especially young generation, do not, do not seem to know the difference. But uh, it would be good no, to, to use it correctly already. Another lesson would be in grammar, the singular man becomes man. The subject is plural. Magkutlo siyag sampagita. Ang subject, kuan, ang tao, the one who does it, no? Um, magkutlo siya, but mangutlo if there are two or three. Pagkuhag kahoy, panguha mo dihag kahoy. And by the way, there's another rule to these uh, sentences uh, involving syntax or word order. In Cebuano and as well as in other Philippine languages, we do not begin with a subject that is English. Like, she gathers some pagita flowers. You don't say that. No? You, let's say, siya mangutlo some pagita, no? But we always begin with a verb, mangutlo, pagputlo, pagputlo. What else about Cebuano language? Well, you know how rich our language is. Just vocabulary for cleaning and grooming. Now, this would be part of culture. If you study the language, you will know what is important in that culture. Why, for example, do the Eskimo have 100 terms for snow? It's because snow is important to them. They, they live uh, in an environment full of snow. Can we say then that uh, we are a clean people? 
Wash hands, bang hanaw. Wash feet, bang himatiis. Wash limbs, bang himasa. Wash up, bang hugas. Wash face, bang hilampus. Brush teeth, manipilio. Gargle, bang limugbo. So in, in English, for example, you just use generically wash, and then you just tell what part of the body no, or what, what object to wash. Pick teeth, ang hingi ki. Pick nose, ang hingog mo. Bathe, maligo. Comb hair, anudlay. Clean or tidy up, manghinlo. Clean one's ass, manghilo. Cut fingernails, manghinguko. Well, I, I'm glad there is no danger of uh, having these terms uh, extinct because they are everyday things that we do. Unless you go abroad and forget our language, you will still remember. Um, here, is, uh, here are examples of strange words that we don't really use, but maybe it's good to know parts of the body. For the middle finger alone, we have three terms. Dalagangan, ang lababaw, o tamubuso. For flora and fauna, do you know what King Carol is? What King Carol is a kingfisher. Sibukaw is a plant that uh, is used for dyeing. D-Y-I-N-G. Not matay, no? Pero dying. Parts of the house, like Suambi, do you know what that is? It is uh, a part where, it is part of the house. Uh, the typical Cebuano or Nipahat is just one floor, but you have uh, below it, you have uh, space, no? Because our house would be on still space for the animals like uh, the, the, the domesticated chicken and the pigs. But Swambi is still up there where you have uh, a, a kind of granary or storage. And it could be also a bedroom. It depends on what is what is needed at the moment. But sa amo, Swambi, we, we put the corn husk there so when we are ready to Lubo bitaw the corn to grind the corn. Uh, not grind, but you, you, what do you do this? Like, maglubo ka so that the, the kernels will, will be removed from the husk. No? Pantawan is uh, usually outside of uh, the kitchen where you, you can bathe yourself. Idioms. Haringang is panahon pa ni Mampot. Haringang is something to do with uh, the, the the folk tale that I mentioned a while ago about the cicada being the king of the insects and against the lion, the king of the animals. And we can tell that that was that uh, emerged during the Spanish period because we don't have lions here. But haringang is now refers to tigas dito, mamuragwan. Dili mahadrup, no? Bisa gamay siya, haringang. Panahon pa ni Mampor is used to to well refer to something that is very old. But actually, this comes from the name of Captain Joaquin Montfort, Montfort, Montfort during the Spanish Revolution. We go now to performing arts, that would be music, dance, song. Tamana. Harana. They start just Cebuano. We have Harana all over the Philippines, I think. But how many of us will uh, have not just seen Harana in the movies, but really experienced Harana? Uh, there was a time when I was still, uh, well, single, no? Uh, well, some of the young men in our town would, would do harana. But later, they would just bring a kanang murag cassette with tape. Oh, so murag, wala na ang harana good na na isista. This is the famous balitao, and it's unique in the sense that it combines song, poetry, Music, kaina may accompaniment, and dance at the same time. Sinulog. This is a sinulog, pindera sinulog. You have another kind of sinulog, which is the um, Mardi Gras sinulog. And still another kind should be the, which, which um, Titan Jola no, um, still performs in Casa Gorordo every year. And this would refer to the, the fight between the Spaniards and the natives. There are sinulog before Santo Domingo. This is Mananagat. Of course, um, fishing is a very important part of our lives because uh, we are surrounded by water in the Visayas. So it is uh, logical that we have 
imitative um, dances like mananagat. This is kuratsa. Typical of uh, Visayan dances, kuratsa does not have um, a formal, uh, let's say, a sequence. Like the dancers, man and woman, are free to move according to the music. You don't have, uh, unlike other other dances where you have step one, no? and then next you have turn around, and next and you have change places. No, this one is free, which is very Visayan because Visayan is free. And uh, not really careless, but just a lack of formality. Of course, that is the Pinikling, which is not just found here, but all over, but it's all over the Philippines, but it's supposed to have um, originated in Leyte because of the tickling bird. But you know, I went to Cambodia about 10 years ago, and they have uh, some something like this using bamboo poles too. So it must be uh, popular in places where you have a lot of bamboo. Ritual is another form of intangible heritage, defined as the performance of ceremonial acts prescribed by tradition. Aside from the church rituals of baptism, you know, and uh, uh, other flores de mayo we have some which are really only in cebu and one of them is the sunda lisa he is found in aluginsan sunda lisa is a marriage ritual combining poetry music and fashion the poetic verses called garay are spoken by a male and a female they are engaged in a romantic conversation mimicking the bride and groom to be but what is not found in other courtship rituals would be the fashion show. During the exchange, musical instrumentalists would fill the air. Uh, yeah, the last one here is about display of fine collection of garments in a combination of flowery, flowing, and regal costumes. Next would be folk medicine. Nanambal using an oration or incantation to treat an alleged victim of sorcery. By the way, folk healing is also associated with a lot of superstitious uh, beliefs. Like when you have your menstruation, you don't do this and do that. No? And uh, when you are uh, pregnant, you don't do this, you don't do that. So these are superstitious beliefs, but they may have scientific basis after all. This is the mahiyain in Tagalog or kipi kipi, no? which is used to treat fatigue. And what, uh, who would know this? The old people, no? people in the city, for example, uh, wouldn't practice because in the first place uh, they would have to look for the kipi. No? Um, but some old people still uh, make use of this knowledge. Another is the yerba buena, literally uh, buena, good herbs, no? like mint, possessing aromatic properties they are used in cooking and medicine it is supposed to be beneficial to the skin as well as to prevent some kind of cancer i don't know which kind we also have fishing and farming traditions that that is the uh, the most popular no like uh, fish and line and this one just line is that uh tuba gathering at least, uh, we have Lambano, of course, in uh, Luzon. And this is especially in Cebu, where, uh, you know, people not from Cebu or foreigners really sleep. Are those mango fruits there? Why are they uh, paperish? Or <laughs> they are covered in white. This is to protect the mango from uh, pests, you not know, insects, so that their skin is smooth. Of course, the fiesta is part of our tradition, uh, but it is a whole complex. It is just not just on kind of, uh, two days, like the eve and then the fiesta itself. We call this kind of, thing, uh, fiesta sa kind of first or second. Uh, huh? Dispiras o kahulugan. Okay, so here are some activities organizing for the fiesta. So you'll have uh, what groups will participate and what is their schedule and what will they do. Committee work, nine days of novena prayers, procession, of course, fiesta mass, religious literary musical, sometimes you have drama, of course, competition, 
folk dance show, theatrical show. Okay, Cebuano products of local materials and skills. The products themselves may be tangible, but I already mentioned that the skills in making those products are intangible, and you need to preserve those skills. You know? If the old people die, who will continue doing, weaving our maps, our baskets? So these are uh, products. This is Hablon of Argao, and you have uh, Shell Craft. Furniture, of course, is a Cebu top product. Tablia from uh, cacao. Dried mangoes. These are the dried fish in uh, Tabuan market. Baskets. You have hats, mats, bags. And this is the lagang that I mentioned that is not, not anymore uh, reduced because there are no more shells like those. Very beautiful. They have uh, shine in them, like pearls. Of course, you have textile skills. There are two examples here. One is the Hablon of Argao, and this is developed now and very preserved. There is a program at the uh, Cebu Technological University in Argao that they have really uh, that made it into an industry. People can go there and, and, and order. In fact, uh, Dexter Alasas, a well-known couturier no, in Cebu City, has helped develop this industry. When I was young, I mean, we, we, we used the uh, Hablon um, blankets and, and uh, what is this, uh, personalized, personalized uh, towels with our names woven. In Lanilla embroidery. Now for desserts, we now have another kind of intangible heritage, and this is cuisine. Painit, turta. Budbod sa katmon. Pinignit saya. Muna. Bibingka sa mandawi. Salbaro. Biko. O proskilios. Elements of Cebuano cooking. By elements, we mean uh, ingredients that are usually there and the way we cook. For no? example, we really love to have sili with salsa one, sometimes with uh, soy sauce and uh, suka. And suka ang bisaya, which is made from tuba. We use in pinilaw, in seaweed, or in pinununan. Tuno salubi, also in pinilaw, utan sinabaw, and as snacks. Uh, not, <laughs> not only tuno, but uh, tuno uh, with rice, no? like in biko, in in budbud. Like this one next. Good, 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 palitaw. And then sinukba, grilled meat or seafood. And we have versions of Filipino favorites. Like bam e is, uh, is our equivalent of uh, pancit something, pancit. Some kind of pancit, no? not canton, but not look good, but anyway, bam e. Balbakwa uh, is our version of kari kari. Dinubuan, or dinubuan here is, is not sour and it is a bit drier than the Tagalog. Kumba, asal o puso. So we have pictures. This is the Tindilaw. This is the Balbakwa. This is, what is that? Tuslub, tuslubua. Uh, uh, street food. The kuku, kuku. This is pork kumba. Saya. Say nga na the way uh, kan ng utan bisaya, you know? And uh, of course, nasal. And we have, sa Malaysia. Oh, yeah, that's the bambi. And that is the puso. Okay, now we're through with the forms of uh, heritage. So, what do we consider in conservation of heritage? So, what aspect of heritage should be conserved? It depends on what is significant. And what would be significant, there are four aspects to consider. Number one is historical significance. Is there any site in your town or locality, for example, 
where the Japanese surrendered or where the Spaniards uh, hold up or um, did something you know, that is worth um, knowing in the development of events in our place. The age of rela or relationship to historical era, person, or event. Like in Kawit Cavite, the house of Camilo Aguinaldo is, is historically significant because uh, it is there where the flag was first, Filipino flag was first uh, elevated. No? Historical significance is relatively easy and overbearing trait in heritage management. It's, it's easy because uh, usually these are intangible. Uh, these are tangible, uh, immovable. Another significance is social. That means involving people and people's activities, the social, spiritual, and other community-oriented values attributed to a place. This may be because the place has existed to serve a certain important role in the society for a period of time. Now, last week, we had a meeting with the Commission of Historical and Cultural Affairs about the project of carbon. Uh, I think, uh, what is the master? Uh, there, there is a, uh, a group that will make a world or something will develop carbon. And carbon has a, a real significance in our history, socially as well, because uh, every every time you come home, you put the carbon, because this is where you see what people eat, no? The fruits, the vegetables, the kinds of fish, and other uh, things to eat. And people also used to meet in the, the Freedom Park before. And uh, we, we noted that some of the plants of the mega world in developing carbon uh, would, would destroy uh, the fabric of the place. Like, for example, they would put up the Freedom Park in a fourth floor or third floor of a building. And, and you know, it, it, is, it is opposite to what we are used to because Freedom Park is a place where any, yeah, anybody can go to, to buy or to debate or to show uh, some theatrical pieces or to, to uh, recite poetry. And children can just uh, run around. And if you go to the third... If it is placed on the third floor of a building, it's not really that accessible. Another thing that well, I personally objected to was uh, the construction of uh, a church. Well, you know, it's very near Santo Nino already. So do we need a church really there? And that church, I think, is a, a bit overwhelming because the design of it is a, a huge, a very huge Santo Nino uh, monument on top of the church. I think uh, it's... It, it's it destroys the historical look of the place. It has to be consistent. You know, the buildings have to have some kind of uh, um, oldish look, like the ones uh, in near the city hall. Aesthetic significance, a special sense of importance of a place is to be in terms of architecture, scale, or even designs seen on the place. Or an example would, would be uh, in Karkar, you know, the dispensary of Karkar where you have this beautiful uh, design, like filigree of wood. The last would be scientific significance, where we already, we already saw um, the flora and fauna and how it is good to, to preserve them. You know, they, they are going to be extinct in the years from now. Aside from that, flora and fauna, you also have the archaeological um, sites, which, which need to be... Um, excavated so we get to know more about how our old people live. We come to the last part of uh, this presentation. What is the relation between cultural heritage and tourism? Well, tourism is a growing industry and it is, I think, the, the best industry that could help develop or preserve our cultural heritage. Why? because people are curious about how other people live and what they eat, what they, what they wear, where they go to for entertainment. No? Like probably they would not like to see Sabo because they, yeah, I have, I have heard a lot of uh, remarks from foreigners that it is bloody no? and uh, you know, cruel, but it is part of our uh, heritage. But other things that they would like to see would be um, the, the, the foreigners, anyway, would be those that I already mentioned, the historical, but they would also like to see tangible. And you had programs before uh, where 
the foreigners are made to experience you know, life in the rural. Like instead of staying in a hotel, they're made to stay in a in a well near a house and they're made to experience uh, fishing. Uh, this kind of community fishing where you have kind of guru guru ibitao, like anybody who wants wants fish can can participate and they are given a share when they catch uh, the net, no? The link between culture and tourism is the most visible aspect of the contribution of culture to local development. Even if you just put the artifacts there in the museum, they can earn already, you know, because of the curiosity of other people about us and uh, not just to see uh, dances and to enjoy our songs, but also to see uh, our furniture before and types of transportation before and things like that. When tourism is identified as part of an overall development strategy, the identification, protection, and enhancement of historic resources is vital for any sustainable effort. It has to be sustainable because there is a kind of tourism that will destroy the site you know, if you are not careful. Not just even destroy, but uh, the thing, the, 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 well, when, when they leave their garbage around, I mean, that is already destroying the environment, like at Kawasan Falls, no? where you have your plastic and tin cans and what. They will uh, affect the beauty of the place. And if there are any fishes or what other living things like octopus, uh, that will also be destroyed. Heritage visitors stay longer. This is uh, based on research. Spend more per day and therefore have a significantly greater per trip economic impact. The tourism sector is the industry that uses cultural heritage to the greatest extent because it also supports other industries like hotel, accommodation, transportation, and catering. Oh, you could mention here the uh, the tourism site at the uh, Oslo Banana Butanding do? Butanding sa Oslo? No. Yeah, uh, what is the problem there? Because uh, well, it is already regulated, no? Not, not uh, like so many visitors can 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 uh, ride the boat and, and and visit the Butandi because they are overwhelmed by so many people, and some of these tourists they touch the Butandi, and that is not good for them. Although they have, they uh, feel compelled to go to that place because the fishermen will feed them. But that will also destroy them as a species because then they become dependent on man. No? Uh, the, yeah. Next. Due to the exploitation of heritage, many new jobs are generated in the tourism sector. When heritage tourism is done right, the biggest beneficiaries are not the visitors, but the local residents who experience a renewed appreciation for and pride in their local city and its history. Well, city or town. What is sustainable tourism? I mean, sustainable, it will continue, no? Is a means to protect and sustain the world's natural and cultural resources, that means our heritage, while ensuring tourism meets its potential as a tool for poverty alleviation. It has to have those two, protection of resources and alleviation of the local people uh, suffering. According to the UN Environment Program, this type of tourism development should make optimal use of environmental resources without destroying them, respect the sociocultural authenticity of host communities and not abusing you know, their hospitality, for example, and not uh, being respectful. Last is ensure viable long-term economic operations. But today, cultural heritage is threatened by unprecedented growth and change in Asia, pressure from competing high value activities, impact of major infrastructure programs, like the, the road that goes south that will need the cutting of the uh, acacia trees. No, you have heard of that uh, protest environmental pressure and carrying capacity. Carrying capacity would refer to the load. How many people you know, can be carried by this site at a certain time? 
So we talk about globalization, localization. Globalization is what we have today, the spread of products, technology, information, and jobs across national borders and cultures. Well, it threatens the cultural uh, identity because then everybody uh, will be, uh, will be drinking Coca-Cola, for example, or uh, viewing K-dramas like myself. <laughs> but we also have this uh, balancing idea of localization where the global is adapted to become local. It is used to describe localization, a product or service that is developed and distributed globally, but also adjusted to accommodate consumers and users in their local context. So uh, a not very good example would be the Riverstone Castle in Argao, and my hometown. I think it, it has closed already, but uh, it, it is uh, the architecture is really of uh, Middle Age Europe, and if you have been there, you have dungeon, you have a dungeon, you have uh, other other things, no, which which show you uh, artifacts of the medieval medieval culture, but that is really foreign, and but what they serve there is 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 not authentic uh, medieval, of course, but picture. So uh, I I'm not sure if that was a very good uh, thing to do. If they could just be really authentic and become you know, like well, we have the the knights and the round table, um, they attempted to do it, but maybe not so successfully. Means of preservation would be cultural show for tourism projects. Like when uh, in in January we have a lot of uh, visitors, not just from abroad but also from neighboring provinces because of the Sinulog, and they have this program at Ayala to uh, welcome. And then you have a, a space there for cultural shows. The writing of local history. Cebu is the only place in the whole Philippines where the province has completed uh, 52 or 53 books of local histories. No? Every town has one book. I was part of that as editor. Next is museums. You can have those museums. But the museums should not just be for, you know, gathering things inside the shelves. They have to be now, they have to be interactive. I think Casa Gorordo is doing that very well. Here are examples of these uh, uh, threats no, to a natural environment or natural heritage. A few years back, you have this uh, movement to save the trees because they were going to cut uh, the acacia trees lining the road from San Fernando to Larkar. And if you haven't been to that place, uh, well, you miss something. It is uh, unique, no? You have a canopy, uh, both sides of the road, uh, you are protected from the sun. And you, you're, it's like going through uh, a green tunnel. Very cool. Now, the, the uh, Mardi Gras, Sinulog, sometimes uh, would have uh, bad effects on the children that are forced to participate. So here is a child, a dancer from Tabuelan who collapsed after performing on the street. And there are also some bystanders who, who collapse because of the long wait. Here is a case where Cebu University students and professors were in trouble for killing endangered birds. So there were three former biology students and their professors in Cebu City were charged with a violation of the law on wildlife protection for cutting up they dissected eight black shama birds for a research project to find out what they eat what they eat this is the siloy birds are endemic or native to Cebu and found in dwindling forest patches Okay, so uh, what would be more innovative use or maybe more sustainable uh, would be, for example, conserving the local uh, natural heritage inside a commercial space. And you have the use of local tree species in a ball garden. You know? So it is contemporary use, but you have uh, the native species. We are preserved this way. Another would be reuse of built heritage. The Fort San Pedro, for example, 
today is a museum and uh, it is a tourist spot. But there were some times in the past where it was a zoo. It became a hospital during the war. And uh, today, uh, or and, and before before uh, the uh, active uh, campaign for tourism, they were they had um, wedding receptions, and now you have museum inside it. And this is, of course, uh, where we are today, uh, Casa Museum. It's a 19th century house serving as a museum with a shop and a cafe. Serves local delicacies and coffee from a night. The profit will be utilized for the museum's social activities, including lectures like this, huh? <laughs> this is the last slide. So you can yourselves think of projects that you can individually or as a group in school or as a family or as a community that you can engage in in order to help conserve and preserve our natural, tangible, and intangible heritage. You can collect cocktails from your town or from the city. You can even collect stories within your family, especially if you have old people still surviving. Tales about experiences during the war, for example. You can make your family tree. And you can continue classes in Cebuano language that should include creative writing. So you can use the language in innovative ways. You can experiment with, you know, parts of speech and metaphors and similes. And at the same time, the poetry or story will be based on folklore. You can participate in cultural mapping activities in local communities. There is a law for that that every local government should conduct a local uh, cultural mapping activity. And of course, patronize local products. So uh, buy baskets, especially now, instead of uh, plastic, no, <laughs> you use something like that. Can a basket now, Bukag has a wide mesh, but the ones that are woven, Anyway, learning a skill in handicraft. No, there are many. And if you find a handicraft that is popular in your town, you can probably do it. It does not have to be handicraft, but even cooking some kind of dish. Adapting traditional art forms for contemporary use. An example of this would be what uh, Casa Gorordo already uh, just recently conducted, which is a Balitao competition in Central Visayas. Uh, using the old traditional form of balita, which is a debate between man and woman, no? uh, combining the art forms of song, music, dance, and poetry, they the, the theme was now, it's still courtship, but uh, involving the pandemic. No? Uh, uh, about 10 years ago, we also had this uh, for some uh, theme, uh, like uh, the productive health theme. Combining forms of heritage for commercial touristic purposes, like uh, an illustrated children's book on Maria Cacao with the sale of Tablia, because Tablia is from Cacao. This is, this is actually a project that uh, me, no, I, I have I've been asked to participate in this project um, by, well, uh, some, some company that, that, that uh, produces Tablia. There are other things that you can uh, by yourself think about, no? So this will end the presentation today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ma'am Linda, for the very informative uh, lecture. No, uh, I'm pretty sure that our audience really was interested sa kaning ato ang um, what do you call this? Sa kaning ato ang discussion kano wala ni drop 300 ang ato ang audience for the entire. Um, so we will now go to um, our questions portion. We have two questions since uh, a lot of our uh, audience are teachers and students from our partnerships at Ed. So our first question is from Sir Christian Abaya. Uh, his question is that kindly differentiate culture, traditions, rituals from each other using examples now. 
culture, tradition, and, and rituals. Ritual is part of culture. I think I, I that was in the slide. Ritual is intangible heritage. And heritage is part of culture. This is the part of culture that you want to pass on to your children and grandchildren. You think they are valuable, they are worth preserving. That is heritage. And, uh, and what's the other word? Tradition? Tradition, tradition and rituals. Uh, ritual, we already uh, explained that ritual. It, it can be a uh, ritual in the family, it can be ritual in the group of people. Like there are some neighbors in, in our place that uh, hold a kind of party every every year. No? You have a ritual would be a sample for a clan to hold a reunion. And there are rituals that are observed all over the world, like Christmas. No, They have Christmas tree and exchange presents, etc. Those are rituals. They are um, repetitive. No. And the other one is tradition. Tradition, tradition is heritage, uh, almost the same. But uh, tradition is something that has has been observed already. Tradition. So my so my binisaya ang tradition, eh? Na kanang naandan, naandan. What we are used to, used to do, used to eat, used to wear. This part of tradition is really also heritage. Okay, so let's move to our um, second question. Uh, second question is from Maria Liu. Watching from Davao City Po, my family donated uh, a two-hectare property for an elementary school named after our great-grandfather in 1957. Uh, being one of the pioneer families of the city and of statesmen, may I ask if um, government-owned schools can pass for heritage sites of cultural significance? Pwede ba daw siya nga makonsider, ma'am, ang katong school? To apply to the National Commission, uh, National Historical Commission of the Philippines, they will send somebody to your place to inspect orally and uh, interview people, what is the significance of this part, and then they will declare it a cultural property and it will be protected no, by law. You cannot destroy it if it is 50 years old or over. And third question is from Ms. Christelle Ko. Can we preserve and improve on how we publish our cultural heritage in our textbook? If possible, localize it so that the different region can properly educate our pupils. Well, of course, yes, you can do that. You have to do a lot of work, research, do cultural mapping, and you cannot do it alone. Uh, I think there has to be a group. You have heritage groups that can help you. you know, that if it is a, a school uh, project, then uh, DepEd will surely support, you know, like publication of uh, textbooks, which will integrate heritage education. Okay, so doable to kayo ni si Yeah. na so kinsa ang bubuhat sa research and all that. Okay. And then fourth question is from uh, Miss Elvira Ovenario. I can see that. Yes, it is. Mm, yeah, the palisa. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in, in fact, it just uh, I just found it at uh, the Facebook Facebook no. Can mm. you first get up on pillboxes? Yes, the thing Very is um, because of the pandemic, ma'am, a lot of a lot of pages in Facebook, a lot of bloggers use um, heritage for their like, a main source for their content. Yeah. So, so mauna sa mga like a good effect of the pandemic is also it boosted um it, it somehow boosted promoting you know, um heritage in, in general. Including natural heritage. <laughs> I see a lot of uh, posts about plants no that are weird looking but very uh, nice also. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving forward to the fifth question. Um, I'd like to ask, uh, as heritage is closely entangled to the places it's originally located in, what is your take on private entities buying and negotiating heritage sites and locating them in um, ancestral houses? Sorry, um, negotiating sites. Case point is ancestral houses. 
and locating them in simulated uh, sites such as the one in Bataan. That's a rather long question. You have you have to read it again, no? Uh, Osma. Hi, sorry, sorry. Um, I said a bit. I thought if I move on to your question, what is your take on private entities buying and negotiating heritage sites such as ancestral houses and locating them in simulated sites such as the one in Bataan? I think you must put any like private entities buying heritage structures and then transferring them. Like this, or like I, I think the Lord uh, does not say anything about transferring of ownership. No, it's just the preservation that you don't destroy it. If you buy it from a private, or like a family, as long as you don't destroy the house, for example, then you use it uh, as part of a complex tourist, a tourist uh, place to visit, where you have. Uh, Maybe a restaurant, a hotel, or what? That's fine. It's not against the law. Okay. But as, you don't destroy it. As long as uh, the, the structure yeah. is uh, protected. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have a lot of questions actually. Um, we have one more. Yeah, I can read it. Okay. Can we implement in the education system the study of the base heritage, whether elementary high? You can. You can uh, implement it at all levels, but you know, uh, just uh, grad gradated, like for elementary, it's simpler. And then maybe for uh, the college, it will have to be more uh, research, you know, based. Especially during these days, we, the new generations, really don't have knowledge regarding what our history really is. Heritage embodies our unique cultural identity. Also refers to the understanding of oneself, relation, the particular culture. Yeah, so what is that number two there? Since language is part of yeah, I already suggested in one of the slides that we continue uh, courses in language. So as of now, we have a basic only uh, grade grade one to three, I think, no? where you have the medium of instruction is our mother tongue. But we can um, expand that and make make the lessons more say, academic when we go to college, for example. And I. I suggested uh, using our language innovatively, and that means creatively, in fiction and poetry. Because it is in poetry and fiction where you uh, push the frontiers of language use. Okay. Natay, yeah. um, one last question din, um, It is from Natalie Baluyo. What college degrees are useful for people who want to study and preserve heritage, especially in the Visayas? Wala. I'm sorry, wala. History maybe, but we don't have local history. We have Philippine national history. At the University of San Carlos, uh, we have a special uh, graduate program called Cebuano Heritage Studies Program. And that's the only place uh, really where you can have uh, such specialization in heritage studies. I I teach uh, Cebuano language, Cebuano literature, and Cebuano uh, popular culture there. And I, I think they are offering it uh, after about five years, no, not offering it, they are renewing it now. Uh, um, this is from uh, Mamang Kalabaw. When we talk about national heritage, are we talking about heritage as real Filipinos or heritage as colonized Filipinos? We are still Filipinos, whether uh, we talk about pre Spanish or Spanish or Japanese or American, they're all part of heritage if we think they are of significance. For example, the buildings that were built during the American period from Puente Osmania to Capitol building, they may be uh, products of a colonized period, but they're part of our heritage. Our people were there. They went to office there and they had needs that were served in those places. Hospitals, school buildings like the Baldon type, you and I, uh, well, I don't know about you, but but I uh, I studied in government type building that was a, um, an American style uh, kind of building. My elementary 
and it was a good building very sturdy until now uh, they are still around so whether it is japanese or spanish doesn't matter not all of the sites or all of the things that you find during those periods might be considered significant well it depends on what uh, we agree on huh? but um we have the different people have different views I think. so anybody can consider any kind of heritage worth preserving then you should do it should you should uh participate in activities that will have conserved if we can conserve everything well fine but if we cannot so don't have a means and have time and have to select this okay okay and that's it for our uh, questions. Mom Linda, again, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. I enjoyed very, it too. Very I'm, valuable, I'm, glad. Uh, I'm glad that there are a, a good number of people interested in Yes, in yes. A, a lot of them are students. We have um, audiences from Luzon. We have from Negros later, even as far as Australia uh, in, in Mindanao. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> So again, ma'am, thank you so much for accepting our invitation for this talk. I would also like to thank our partners in DepEd for supporting our CGM talk this afternoon, especially uh, DepEd Region uh, 7. Regional Director Dr. Salustiano Jimenez, Assistant Regional Director Dr. Cristito Eco, Curriculum and Learning Management Division Chief Dr. Maria Jesusa Despoco, and our coordinator slash education program supervisor, Dr. Jovelin Oberto. Thank you so much. And this is a part, this is also the support to them at Region 7 in celebrating the National Heritage Month. Um, we hope that we can partner more uh, with them at future uh, uh, activities and programs in his Akasagro Museum. So, uh, with that, Akasagro uh, Museum would like to thank all the viewers in Facebook. And in YouTube, guys, we are now um, active. So YouTube, we have our YouTube channel. You can just search uh, Casa Gordo Museum. You can watch previous episodes of our um, CGM talk. And we actually have a series of videos about the towns in Cebu. We promote heritage, basically. So it's called So Beautiful. So Naadito Kasagara, for example, uh, Torta of Argal, Lechon of Talisay, so, dito na tumakitan ang uh, among isa isa, rather among isa isa ang towns dito sa Cebu and um, showcase uh, heritage. Tumakitan dito. And if you'd like to see more of uh, the content of Casa Grand Museum, do not hesitate to like and follow us on Facebook www.facebook.com slash Casa Grand Museum and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much again for this uh, wonderful opportunity to share with you. Uh, knowledge and cultural heritage. So, thank you so much for having us. Stay safe and see you again at Casa Gordo Museum.
Kai Kai Wei, mana tu cikgu nak kira? Pandemia banyak lagi sedikit maglak maglak, tano? Jauh, mana cikgu pakai nak ko? Nama orang good, ada lang. Atau kata kasar koridor museum lah. Di pasar ada pasir lah. Ambil na, oi, virtually. Ano pang good be? Kamo kali mood good ni saat ko ni maglak last year. Kadi lang sa pernaw ha. Pinaagi sa Casa Gordo Museum virtual tour. Makasuway tag guided tours lud sa balay ug napagay mga pagdrama sa maayong pamatasan sa una sa mga subuan nun. Hello kay Sir Good Anak B. Basin mo hal sa kayo na B ha. Abi na gayud sa sa. Hello B, afford ra kay ni B. Uy, only the best for you. Kimmy no tore. Hello, what is the admission fee? Hello, ato kung masuway at hindi. So, hey, good! Pwede na mo bisita sa Casa Gordo gamit ibang mga smartphone, iPhone, Android phone, aside sa laptop or desktop. Hello, ingo na nag-adjust sila ka-accessible? Hello, kasi yun na di mo sorry sa Casa Gordo Museum o may... Mata na, uy! O niya, kumusta man na may experience sa Casa Guru do Museum Virtual Tour? Nindot kaya akong feeling, uy, kay Murad siya kung naasa sulod sa museum. Ugdaghan sa siya kung nakatunan, uy, bahin sa sa balay, uy, kultura. Ugkabilin sa atong mga sugbuanong katigulangan. O basta ay nindot kayo o ako po nang i-share ang link sa virtual tour nila Lester, Japet, James o Jasper o sa ako mga mga o family o para kinistan na So ano mo paglangan? O i-check na ninyo ang website sa kasagurudomuseum.org Aro na experience ninyo ang among experience.